I looked up my commuting flight and someone called out. So I may need to find a different way to get to work today because that flight currently is missing a flight attendant. I'm deciding what I'm wearing because this, this place is so cool. It's a princess trip. Call it a prince trip. Work one flight there, one flight back, and you get to enjoy a 24-hour layover. Why do I need three pairs of pants for a 24-hour layover? I should pack the night before, don't you agree? <laughs> it's kind of a mess, but it is what it is. I need to pack my uniform now. It's so hard to bring all of this stuff to New York. If I forgot my passport, I cannot go. If I forget, like, and I can't work, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a bigger deal. Sometimes I forget I live in beautiful LA. It's so pretty today. I'm getting in the Uber. I was gonna take the bus, but I missed it. Oh, I made it to LAX. That took forever, and I'm not even at the right terminal. It's a little trick. If you're going to Terminal 5, but LAX traffic is like this, Tell your Uber driver that you're going to Terminal 7 and walk back, but have them drop you off the second you get to 7. The walk will take you literally less than five minutes. Basically, this crew is on a trip. They had a Los Angeles layover. Someone called out, they must have gotten sick or something. Then they found someone. I'm praying that this works out. I think it will though. But this is how commuting works. Commuting can be incredibly stressful. Usually this doesn't happen because this is a base for my airline. It's a really good place to commute from. There's a million flights a day between LA and New York. But sometimes it's like this. Commuting is full of surprises and some of them can actually be good. Like finding out you're getting to fly business class just when the gate agent prints out your boarding pass. This is a perk that airline employees get to enjoy and it's one of my biggest reminders to just be grateful. This life has afforded me so much. Now that we're up in the air, there's so much to show you. When you fly business, the airline will provide you a menu. The flight attendant took my order, and while waiting for my food, I started using the amenity kit. To think, less than an hour ago, I thought I'd be sitting in economy. This was my first time having bread pudding, and it was delicious. I configured my seat so I could lie down to edit, and before I knew it, we were landing in New York. be based in LAX, I could start and end all my trips at home. This is why I don't, LAX crews don't go where we're going. Right now, I'm still not being paid, still not on the clock. I mean, technically I'm on the clock, but we haven't gotten on the plane. We get paid once we push back from the gates. This whole day has been, um, you know, just a day of me getting to work. I saw the sunrise and saw it set too, so if that says anything. All right, let's get on the plane. You want to know why I commute all these miles, all these hours across America? This is why. Like, look at this. Look at this beautiful view. I've never seen this before in my life. And I'm getting to see this gorgeous room. Like, I feel so blessed. There's a shower and then there's a tub. Oh my gosh. Your boy is tired. Your boy wants to sleep. I have never seen this before. Have you guys seen this? What a freaking mala. Someone asked me today, oh, do you want to do anything with journalism? Because I graduated with degrees in journalism and sociology. So when I'm posting about news, it's not a joke. I actually know what I'm talking about. Like I'm actually trying to put something together, trying to show you the world, not only through my eyes, but inform you about things. And so, yeah. This is it. 
I feel like what better than for a young journalist to be flying across the country and like literally learning so much nuances throughout the world because I feel like that's really what it is. I didn't study abroad in school. I didn't get this opportunity. Not everybody's lucky enough to do that in school. And I'm not going to say I wasn't afforded amazing opportunities in college. I was, believe me. But I didn't get to study abroad. Now I'm getting that opportunity through this job. So yes, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the full advantage of that. Okay. I just woke up 40 minutes into a breakfast and so I have to get down there ASAP. This is the only thing that annoys me about this layover. Well, not just this layover, but international layovers in general. Like, I'm sure the entire crew is going to be down there and I don't really feel like chatting. I am so excited though. I've never been to Central America. I've always wanted to know what things were like here. I'm so grateful I'm here. I mean, the only thing is I don't know the language which makes me a little scared, you know? But the people on the plane mostly spoke English. They understood how to be like, bro, I want, you know, Kramer. Imagine you wanted to go somewhere for years. You finally get to go. And you just go with like random strangers. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> from a work department that you've never met before. Being that I've looked at stories from places like Honduras actually means a lot to me. fresh this is a guatemalan bread and then this is a bun which is a little bit different but this is like the official guatemalan bread and people seem to be eating this one a lot and i got some corn tamale plantanos and then the eggs and rice a yogurt parfait green juice that has celery coffee with cream <laughs> I actually feel like I don't need sugar. It's so strong, but it's good. Like, I don't feel like I need any extra, even Splenda. It just tastes natural. To live for, it's so good. They just brought over pancakes. <laughs> they looked for me. Cause I was like, ooh, what's that? I'm trying to eat Guatemalan bread. The top has like these sugar crystals. <laughs> it's so good. The bread part is more like a bread roll. Grilled pineapple. Mm -hmm. I think this might be the best breakfast in Guatemala and we didn't have to pay for it, which my whole, like I'm so grateful. I made a video on like what I spend. I spent $40 to get to LAX for this trip because I Ubered, which I try really hard not to do, but I was running late. I asked the hotel staff last night and he only spoke Spanish. So he didn't know what I meant by like, do you have any excursions or like ideas of like, what do I have to do while I'm here? Um, he didn't really understand. So I'm gonna try to ask some people in the gift shop and downstairs, but I also just wanna go explore. I really think I need to learn Spanish. You can get by in San Juan, I hear, but I haven't, Aguadilla, you can kind of get by, right? Puerto Rico, they really know English. When you start getting places like here and you're like, oh yeah, the hotel staff will definitely know English. This is their country. Like, <laughs> it's a Spanish speaking country. Like, we have such, an entitlement and I don't, I don't want to say like, it's kind of like an elitism in the US where we think 
and I mean, even aviation, like pilots, doesn't matter. I don't think it matters anywhere in the world that you fly. I think English is the language for aviation. You get catered to so much in the U.S. And then when you hit some hit up somewhere like here and they don't speak English and you're stuck and you can't order food, you need to learn other languages. It's not for fun. This is about like communication, about respect too, I feel. Like so many people on the plane, I'm sure English wasn't their first language, but they knew how to order their drink. Yesterday, I didn't get to talk too much about it. The flight was magic. It was perfect because of the customers. I really am that flight attendant, for the most part, that will kneel down and talk to kids as they get on the plane. There are many of them that do. There are some of them that are shy, you can understand. But when I tell you, these girls couldn't have been further than like kindergarten, first grade. Their whole soul lit up to say hello. That is so rare to see kids that really wanna say hi and to say it in another language, right? To know that you're in the US. Like that is crazy to me. I feel so blessed to have gotten to even work that flight. Thank God, like that's so cool. And also it was freaking midnight and those girls were like, bah. As a flight attendant, you'll tell a parent like, oh, the kid needs to be buckled. They'll say things like, well, he, he doesn't want to, like we're trying. I get when they're little, it's hard, but these girls were so respectful, so ready for takeoffs. Wonder if it has something to do with culture, right? In the US versus in, other countries. In the US, I feel like there's this new thing where kids are kind of in charge. A fit check real quick. I got this flannel, shorts, and converse. But they definitely want you to know that you're taking a risk by coming here. And that's from the US. Already noticed in my hotel, there's security cameras in the hallways. Never seen in the US. I don't know if I've even seen that in any other country. So there's another one there, there's one there. There's also a gurney, um, like a stretcher kind of laid out. Um, and that's the in on the floor. I think they probably have one on each floor. No one has said anything to us. I know in certain countries that my colleagues have visited, they've been told, you know, be careful. I was gonna wear a little necklace, and I hear, I mean, in Santo Domingo, I was told that, you know, by my colleague that like you don't need to wear it unless it's like super expensive or something that like looks super flashy. I just have this little H and M chain that I got in Utah. I am wearing my little bracelet, but it's covered by my shirt anyway. I am bringing cash, I'm a little concerned. Let's do this. So this lady who speaks English just told me like, make sure your phone's not visible when you're walking. So I'm gonna walk around and keep my phone in my pocket. <laughs> Just because I think of where we are, like if I looked at somebody in the US, whether you're black, white, Latinx, whatever, Latino, Latina, like I would think you spoke Spanish. I mean, English. Anyway, so that's weird because then you let them down or you don't tell them at all. You just struggle through the conversation like you don't have a brain. Like I was like, like I'm in Spanish class, like repeat they, and she's like, what? <laughs> And I was trying to say, talk in English, but then that went wrong too, because then your brain's trying to do Spanish. Anyway, I went to Dollar City. I got these jalapeno chips. Um, this was all $11 US. I got these because my mom loves Kit Kats and I want to try the dark one. Uh, and then you're never going to believe this. You're never going to believe this. Zero sugar Hershey's. What? First off, the wrapper's different. I thought it would be the other one where you kind of unravel it. This is a rip. It says that it contains oil, milk, and soy. I'm not really in the mood for chocolate right now, but I really want to try this. Like, what does a zero sugar dark chocolate taste like? Hmm. You still get that taste like you had chocolate. 
They also had the Hershey's regular with no sugar. I'm gonna go to the supermarket, El Supermercado, and get El Supermercado. How do you say it? Mercado. Like, without sounding so American. cinnamon milk horchata. It is so good. I just tried it. Oh my god, I could drink that all day. That's delicious. Not uh huh, but it's not good. And it has 24 grams of sugar. It tastes like there's a mint or something in it that I don't know. The second sip is okay, but I don't like it really. Something's in it. I don't know what, but I wonder if it's like, it says natural. It says it's 100% natural. Maybe I'm just used to unhealthy orange juice sandwich spread because <laughs> I've never had this I don't know what sandwich spread is I think it's like mayo but it's different then they have this I think I'm gonna try this right now it's huevos day it's like a a pastry that's made I think just with egg mm -hmm. it's good it's not like right home about it and then I got the crunch bar white sun setting here it's so pretty look that's crazy that's beautiful This layover will forever, forever be fully in my heart. I've dealt with a lot in life this year. I moved to Utah, I moved to Los Angeles, really started posting content toward the end of last year, basically. So it really has been almost coming up on a full year of posting flight attendant content, of taking incredible risks. And honestly, I mean, I'm starting to reap really cool rewards, I feel like. Um, and that, that can be just impact even. And I'm grateful that people feel that from me. But it has not been the easiest year. I'm 24. People see me as a little bit older. I think people look at me and say that I'm young and everything, but I think people do see me because I'm pretty mature and I can hold my own as someone who is very, you know, is older or is strong or is more mature. And so I think people think it's just like easy, but the truth is like, bro, this was like my first time living on my own. I don't have all the answers. And not that people think I have all the answers, but I'm sure maybe you can relate to this too if you're younger, maybe when you were younger, if you're a young person who, you know, has a job and you have your life together and you're kind of, you know, you just, optics are pretty good. Then you get a lot of people who, you know, say things and, and think things. But I think that it was a lot happened along that journey and it was easy for me to get in my head. Um, I'm a Gemini too. Someone told me that Geminis are always in their head, um, which I'm not gonna argue with that statement. It is pretty, uh, pretty true that it, I have to actively work to be out of my head. And I very much notice it in other people when they are in their heads, because I know the value of being out of your head when you are here, when you are in the moment and you're not up here thinking, oh my God, what should I do? You are so much more of value and of service to the world and to everybody around you. Especially now that I have 10K on Instagram that I'm finally figuring out what I wanna do with my life and with this role and with my journalism degree and I'm finally getting there, finally figuring out the ideas, finally growing, finally, it's I, fine, it's been a year and two years almost of this job but I'm finally getting somewhere where I, I can see the growth, I can see what's happening, I can see um, people latching on to what I'm doing and I can see where I can take this. It's easy to get caught up as you grow in numbers, is this about pleasing people or is this about having an impact and making the world a better place? Is this about having 10K or is this about making someone feel that they should take a risk in their life that then allows them to bring their gifts and talents into the world, which then benefits X amount of people? 
and in the end benefits us all when some of us are benefiting. Like when people are benefiting, we're all benefiting, right? Like it's not like you, I'm not, I'm not saying like billionaires profiting means that we're all benefiting. If you were using your gifts and talents, if you were doing the right thing, if you were growing, if you were by osmosis, by just being near you, I feel it too. I know I can do it too. Just by you embodying your purpose and living and trying and going for your dreams, you help this world. That energy is something we all need. And I'm not just saying it on an energetic circumstance. You start going for things. That leads you down paths where you interact with people. And because you're trying to better the world, because you're trying to do a good thing, hopefully the world becomes a better place by that, right? Hopefully their life is impacted by what you do. And then they impact somebody else because they just had a good experience with another human being. We have so many bad ones these days, right? For the first time, I decided to do that American thing where you're in another country, so you go to the McDonald's. They had like a grilled cheese thing, but they call it something else. They also had fries that were the wedges, which I thought was so interesting. They also had a gourmet menu where they have avocado and pico de gallo in your burger. Still tasted greasy, but boy, was it fresh. There's a difference. Not saying it was healthy. I'm just saying it was super fresh. And the restaurant didn't look dirty. You know when you walk into a, a McDonald's in America, it just looks a freaking mess behind the counter. This place looked organized, looked like they had standards, looked clean. Who knows if it's really clean. I'm sitting there, I was eating. I was kind of probably in my head a little bit because of safety and I wanted to film my food, but like clearly Guatemala is not like a place where you should be. I did see someone kind of stare at me like, what's he, I don't know. It's just probably not common place to film your food in Guatemala. I was in my head about that. And this boy, he couldn't have been more than six or seven, probably five, honestly. I really think, I mean, they were alone though. So maybe they were like six. Comes up to me speaking Spanish and I'm like, like, <laughs> But especially, I mean, it's already one thing that I don't really understand Spanish, but it's another thing that a kid is trying to speak to me in Spanish. Cause you know, they may cut out a word or just say something fast. I have no clue what you just said. Like I didn't say that because I can imagine I would have startled him if I just started speaking English at him because everyone here, that was another thing that really made me feel very special was that everyone here gave me a chance. Everyone here thought I spoke Spanish. And of course I got some stares because I'm probably the only black person these people have seen in a minute. I didn't see any black people motion to him to use the bathroom because I think that, I thought that's what he was asking. After that, they sat down and I realized they were staring at me. To me in that moment, what hit me was like, I think they think you're cool. You know, when you were six and you had an older cousin or you had, someone who was a few grades ahead of you that you knew or were friends with or a family friend or something like that and you thought they were the coolest thing ever. I think that's what they thought of me. Had I spoke Spanish, I would have bought them whatever they wanted from McDonald's. I didn't see an adult. Like I would have just like, and I like, I, I just didn't know what to do because I didn't speak Spanish and I didn't want them to think that I, not that, I guess that is something that's also Gemini where you're kind of in your head. I didn't want them to think that I was rude, but more than anything, I wanted to talk to them. Right? I think that was it. For the first time, like, I was furious at myself that I didn't, that I haven't learned Spanish by now. Because I took Spanish classes in college. I took Spanish classes in middle school. I took Spanish classes, like, in high school. I still don't know Spanish. Really hurt for a second. Because I, I mean, I didn't really feel the pain, but I wanted so badly to speak to them. Um, to just, like, be there for them, right? To just let them know, like, hey, what's up? Like, Okay, tal. I could have said something. I just gave them a fist bump as I was leaving. I just literally did like a boom, boom to both of them. And I didn't even say anything. I just did it. And they both did it right back. That will stay with me forever. This was the first time that like something has happened in my life that has made me like direct Lee made me want to learn to speak Spanish. I am really, really grateful for that moment. And it just, so hopefully I go and really Duolingo my life up. This just made me think again of like, what are you doing this for? Like cut the crap, cut the fear, cut the, oh, I'm worried about X. Like be here, be in the moment. There are kids in Guatemala who need you, not just me, who need all of us, right? Not saying Guatemala specifically, right? But I mean, there's gotta be a reason why this place is under some sort of travel advisory. Things are going on in the world. And I think 
it's so important that each of us show up each of us do what we came here to do. Each of us live out our passion, our dreams, each of us, because there are little kids that are counting on you. And I, yes, I'm talking to you. There are little kids that are counting on you to make this world a better place. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, you should be like stressed about the world, but just like, like for a second, take the, the, the it's not about you. It's not about you. This is about something so much bigger than you. So when you're scared, remember that. When you don't wanna take the risk, remember that. Because this is about all of us. We don't need you to live your dreams for you. <laughs> Look, we need you to live your dreams for everybody else, for all of us. So we can all reap the benefits of your talents and your gifts and, and what you came here with. This layover will forever be in my heart. I'm sending you all the love from Guatemala. It's just one flight back to New York. My big thing with shopping is that if you think about it again, within a month or so, go back and get it. I only had a day here, so I was still thinking about this at the end of the day. It's just a hat, but it's what the hat says that makes me so happy. It says, what does it say? Overcome your fears with courage. Home of the courageous. And it says it's from the Brave Hearts team. And I don't know if this is a, a like a collection that's specifically international. It was 219 k towels, so that's like 30 bucks. So it wasn't an expensive hat. Like I wasn't about to, I wasn't about to do it. I wasn't. But then I was like, this hat means something to me, and I will always be like, that's the hat that I got from Guatemala. I didn't want to get a hat that just said Guatemala. Like I wanted to shop local, but the only things local were like clearly for tourists and I'm like I kind of want to walk around with it and like I don't want to be walking around with something that says I'm a tourist you can't get up right now because my leg fell asleep but these pants oh they are so comfy they're so soft I don't want to unwrap it they wrapped she wrapped it amazingly that's for my mom because she's obsessed with plates I got this chocolate this dark this it's a cardamom chocolate and it's made in Guatemala. Got a magnet because I'm obsessed with putting magnets on my wall. I have a friend who's graduating PA school. Like she literally became a physician's assistant. She's about to be somebody's provider is what she says. So I got her this shirt. She studied abroad in Costa Rica. So I know she would want to come here. And the girl said, it's good for Chica. For Chica. So I said, oh yes. I said, you know, because this color, she was like, this is good. And then I also just got this other milk leche chocolate. All right, at the airport, I look a little disheveled. Gotta get myself together. Going through international security is horror. And that's as a flight attendant. Bye, Guatemala. Back home to beautiful Los Angeles. I did have business class going back home as well. So a double business class commute. And I met Hoda Kapi. 